you're a practicing attorney out of Texas, you want to break into television, and you want to do it by dramatizing a true incident. That's what one of our next guests did in a program that premiered an original movie on Lifetime this past Saturday night on World Day Weekend. The film is called Kidnapped, the Hannah Anderson Story. It's based on a true incident. In a moment, we will have that writer join us live via Skype from Austin, Texas, and one of the co-stars will join us live from Los Angeles. But first, here's a very important scene from the film. It involves Hannah. She's trying to get away, and she doesn't. Get something clear between us. What's happening right now, this, we need each other to make this work, like, like a team, right? But I'm getting the feeling that, that you're not on the team. So as much as I like you, Hannah, if you wander off or disobey me again, I will have no other choice but to put a bullet in your head. Last thing I want, but I will, and it will be your fault. Do you understand me? Good. Help me cover the car, okay? In a moment, we'll be joined by the co-star of that film, Scott Patterson. But now, joining us live via Skype from Austin, Texas, in a simulcast exclusive, the author and the practicing attorney of Kidnapped, Hans Wasserberger. Hans, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. First of all, tell us what's going on in Austin. I know over the last 24 to 48 hours in a lot of your state, there's been a lot of flooding and some bit, uh, we've seen some of the pictures this morning. It's, uh, it's quite horrendous. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit surreal. Uh, if you've been here for any length of time, you know we've been under a, about a 10 year drought uh, in Austin and uh, many areas of Texas. And to get rain like this, biblical rain, as, uh, as you might imagine, some are calling it in Texas, uh, it's it's been a relief in one sense, but also quite terrifying. So we're we're certainly thinking of all those folks that are uh, have lost property and and, and life, and uh, hopefully everything everything gets uh, okay for them. So at one point, Hans, did you decide I'm going to go from being a practicing attorney to taking a pretty well known national crime incident and turning it into a made for TV movie? Well. Uh, a long time ago, back in law school, and this is kind of where it all started, uh, I had some uh, some writing chops, but I, I had every intention to be a practicing attorney, and that was a uh, sort of dream of mine for a long time. And I went to this script sale uh, at the union there at Ohio State University, where I went to law school, and I saw uh, Richard Lakelater's Dazed and Confused. It was the, the actual script for the movie, and kind of on a whim, I bought it, and I knew I loved the movie so much, uh, I just sat down and kind of devoured the script, and that sort of lit the second fire in me to uh, go ahead and sit down and write a spec script. And that was back in, uh, I know it seems like it must have just been yesterday because I look so young, but uh, that was back in the 90s. And how did it get from being spec script to lifetime movie? Well, it, it, it's, I'm going to try and do this as quick as I can. The, the one I ended up writing there was something called Second Impression, which is a, a, uh, a movie which, you know, 15 years later, uh, some colleagues of mine here in Austin ended up making a feature film, and, and it's actually uh, about to wrap up, so we're hoping to hit the festival circuit with that one, uh, directed by Wallace Weatherspoon here in Austin. But uh, I, I did a spec, and I contracted a guy, a friend of a friend named Jeff Shank, who uh, is one of the executive producers on Kidnapped. And sometime soon after that, uh, Jeff and I just started hitting it off, and he, uh, he got me what was my first writing gig back in 2006, uh, a movie called Her Fatal Flaw, was, which is a courtroom drama starring uh, a lot of people. Victoria Pratt was in it. And uh, that just kind of went from there. And it, and it went kind of from a single career to a double career. And then I started doing a lot more television movies with uh, Jeff's company and then other ones, including Hallmark and, and uh, things like that. So it just it really kind of mushroomed in the last couple of years. What about this case of Hannah Anderson inspired you to write this? Well, uh, Jeff and the director, Peter Sullivan, uh, came to me uh, last fall, and uh, they said they had this you know, really interesting project, given my legal background. Uh, they thought it might uh, particularly appeal to me as a writer. And I, frankly, I'll be, I'll be brutally honest, I must have missed it the first time around. I know it was a big uh, media thing, and I don't know how I missed this one, but some of my coworkers, uh, uh, Cynthia and Eugenia, they, they, had, they had watched it. But... Um, I learned a lot about it, and I was hooked. I mean, it's an incredibly heartbreaking, yet uh, unbelievably fascinating story. 
and one where so many different opinions are out there on as to what exactly happened. I think it's a, a natural for a, for a television movie. So what is the thesis that you propose in this film? Well, I, I, I know at, at risk of giving a spoiler to something that's a true story where people can, uh, you know, go ahead and look on the Internet. Uh, we have a situation where there was a, a, a family friend of a California family, someone who, uh, based on the research that we did and, and certainly things that can be readily accessed, uh, and Jim DiMaggio uh, was deeply troubled. And at some point, uh, this family friend, uh, Mr. DiMaggio, uh, something has snapped uh, with him, and he ended up, uh, again, uh, don't want to spoil anything as far as the story, but he ended up uh, committing some very heinous crimes and then absconding with, with Hannah up to the, uh, the Idaho wilderness. So it's just a, it's, it's sort of a real rip from the headline story, but I think what this movie does, and that's a, a true credit to not only the actors, but to the director, Peter Sullivan, uh, takes a very human kind of behind-the-camera look at uh, the sorts of things that all the media exposure that Hannah had to endure and her family had to endure under the worst of circumstances, uh, the effect that had on them. And remember, she was a 16-year-old girl when this all happened. And I think a lot of people have ideas of what the right way to act is when you're 16 and you have family members killed and then you're, you're kidnapped. Uh, I don't think there is a right answer. And I think this movie explores that. We're still awaiting, by the way, Scott Patterson, who's the co-star in the film. Does he play uh, Mr. DiMaggio or does he play another character? Yes, yeah, Scott, Scott uh, plays uh, Jim DiMaggio and uh, just did an absolutely fantastic job. Uh, and I think part of the, the reason it was such an amazing job is given uh, not only uh, Scott's most uh, well-known role on the Gilmore Girls, but the other things he's done, this is a real departure for him. And uh, to take, you know, sort of a comedy, uh, some lighter stuff, and, and have that background, and then channel this, uh, this very, very unusual, very violent character and persona so seamlessly, I, I was very impressed. I mean, as a writer, I, I could not have been happier with the performance that Scott gave. And that performance you saw in the clip that introduced this segment. And we have another clip with Hans and the person playing Hannah a little bit later on this half hour. Uh, Scott, I understand, is uh, waiting us on the line. So, Scott, if you give us a call at 646-652-2906, we will get you on right away. And that goes for all of you watching or listening, whether on Blog Talk Radio or in Brooklyn Penn Media. Have a question or comment for Hans Wasselberger. He is the writer of Lifetime's Kidnap, the Hannah Anderson story, which premiered this past Saturday night. It, just give us a call, 646-652-2906. Or use our chat room, Simon Apple 4 my name. We welcome guests 811 and 819 into the room. Speaking of Lifetime, coming up next Monday, they introduce their latest scripted series. It's called Unreal. It's from Marty Noxon, who earlier gave us Bravo's Gift Girlfriend's Guide to Divorce. We hope to have some of the people involved with Unreal on our show Friday. That's Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on Blog Talk Radio. And yes, we'll finally have that comment I've been promising about the Muscat Association's decision to stop doing fundraising on Labor Day weekend. That's all Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, right here on Tomorrow Will Be Televised. Hans, how much of your practice in law uh, shaped the script? You know, it's, it's less any specific thing I've done in law. I, I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I do uh, what, what amounts to um, pharmaceutical fraud litigation, which, which obviously is a, a world apart from the, the kinds of things you're seeing in the criminal realm and kidnapped. But it's sort of a critical thinking uh, sort of deal that, that helps you a lot. And you got to be, although people think of law sometimes as being very you know, black and white and, and by the letter, you have to be uh, extraordinarily creative uh, to be successful as an attorney. And I think to some degree that has helped me uh, with my writing. And I must say, I know, I know Scott's on the way here. This has got to be pretty exciting for you to have uh, uh, two big heartthrobs on your show like this. So I, I, you're, you're being real calm about this, and I, I appreciate that. Well, we love it. Uh, Scott, are you there? Not there. Scott, give us the call, 646-652-2906, and we'll get you on ASAP. For some reason, we're not able to yet get him on, but we hope to have him very, very short. I said we'll have another um, scene with him on. By the way, who plays Hannah, and where did you find the person? Well, uh, her name is Jessica Amley, and she has been on a, a Canadian series uh, called Heartland for a number of years, a uh, very popular show up, up at CBC. And uh, I had the, the privilege of meeting uh, Jessica while I was on set one day. And, of course, I don't make the casting decisions, but uh, after having some time speaking with her about the character and then, of course, uh, seeing her performance uh, over the weekend, I, I'm very pleased. I know the, the production team is very pleased with how she did.
just a real talented, very genuine person. And Scott is with us right now from Los Angeles. Hi, Scott. Hey, Simon. How you doing, buddy? Very well, thank you. And we got Hans. We're happy to say the Skype is working. Hey, Scott, what's going on? Hey, man, you got your scuba diving gear? How's everything down there? You okay? Everybody okay down there? Yeah, you got my I explained a little earlier, it's still a little tight to go here, but uh, uh, we're, we're sort of, things are drawing up, the waters are receding. Uh, I, I, I canoed to work today, but that was just because I like to show off. <laughs> oh, God bless, man. Stay safe down there, all right? Scott, once you got the role to play the kidnapper, how did you fashion your character? You know, uh, Simon, it was... <laughs> I got the role, uh, we agreed to do the role, and then the next day we started shooting, so there was very little time to prep at all. So uh, I really had to do it um, on the fly. I mean, there was, there was, some, there was some material online that I, I went over very, very quickly uh, just to get a general sense of uh, the dynamic be between uh, these two. Um, but, yeah, I, di I didn't have a lot of time to prep, so... Uh, choices were made quickly, and uh, that's kind of how it went down for me. Before you came on, Scott, we ran the clip of you and Hannah in the woods, and certainly uh, you proved to be one threatening character. <laughs> well, you know, Hans uh, wrote a really wonderful script, uh, and, you know, I, I, I wanted to do it. I was intrigued based off the script. Uh, wasn't aware of the story, didn't know about the story. I sort of remembered something a couple of years ago. But the script was, uh, and, and the characters written, was uh, really impactful to me, and I wanted to explore that. I thought, you know, I could, uh, uh, I could bring something to this. This is something I haven't tried before. It's a new challenge. So, you know, as actors, we just, we, we want to challenge ourselves. We want to go to those places where, you know, um, you know we're, we need to go to, you know, to kind of... Uh, you know, expand ourselves and challenge ourselves and keep ourselves interested as actors. And Hans provided a blueprint to be able to do that. So that's why I wanted to do it so much, yeah. Hans, uh, did you have a chance to talk with the Anderson family? And if not, was it a case of they just want to, you know, we don't want to, we want to wash our hands of this, go on with our lives? Or was it a case of we're interested in how you depict us? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, who was taught to and in what ways, that's a, that's a production decision that the uh, that Hybrid LLC has to make. Uh, my job, I was brought in and had uh, had conversations with uh, both the director and the producer, in fact, a number of conversations, and, and did a lot of independent research. Uh, Cinti, a friend of mine, helped me with that, and there's just a lot out there, and I think part of the challenge with the, uh, the Hannah Anderson story is sifting from uh, opinions into, into fact, and there are a lot of people, as I, I mentioned uh, at the outset today, a lot of people with very strong opinions on what happened in this case, and a lot of those folks don't have any real evidence as to why they feel that way. Sometimes it's just the way something strikes you. Uh, but it, it, that was one thing that really struck me is, is just how emotionally charged some of the opinions are for people who basically saw it on TV, mm -hmm. on the news. Uh, we're going to show a clip in a moment, but first of all, I want to let everybody know that Scott is with us live. <clears throat> Excuse me. Scott Patterson is live from Los Angeles, and Hans Wasserberger joining us live via Skype from a very soaking Austin, Texas. But he is with us live and sure right here, both of them on Tomorrow Be Televised. Simon Applebaum here with you from a very dry and very humid New York City, specifically Brooklyn Penn Media Studios near the Barclays Center on this day after Memorial Day 2015. Happy Year Aboard. First of three Tomorrow Be Televised episodes we are doing this week, today, tomorrow, Friday, all at at this hour. If you have a question or comment for Scott or Hans, give us a call, 646-652-2906. That's 646-652-2906. The number is good anywhere you are catching us across the country, around the globe, here on Blog Talk Radio, locally on Brooklyn Pennant Media as well, whether you're catching us on Verizon Fios throughout New York City, or throughout Brooklyn on Time Warner Cable, Cablevision Systems, and RCN. You can also use our chat room, Simon Apple 04 by name, guest 811-819, Rick Weber from Philadelphia, other people also in the room. Remember, Tomorrow, special 90 minute edition, the creator, executive producer of the award winning FX series, The Americans, that will get the Peabody Award this Sunday night here in New York. Joe Weisberg is our lead guest, along with his fellow executive producer, Joel Fields. Then, rescheduled from earlier, the original music composer of Fox's runaway hit Empire, Phil Eisner. And then, check out this CBS series that premieres tomorrow night. What if you are part of a family with economic hardship, and all of a sudden, what comes up in your door, 
a briefcase with $101,000 in cash. What do you do with it? And what if another family at the same time gets the same briefcase? That's the plot of the briefcase. It comes from the creator of The Biggest Loser, Dave Broom. He'll be with us for a same-day live interview tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern, New Pacific, right here on Tomorrow We Televise. We have a call. We're going to take it. Hello, you're on Tomorrow We Televise. What's your name and where are you calling from? We have your report. First of three Tomorrow We Televise episodes we are doing. And we have a call. No, we don't. That person dropped off. Okay, try again. Sorry about that. Again, 646-652-2906. Scott, we saw you in, as I say, a threatening mode, but we're about to play a clip where it's totally different, where you're in, I believe, a diner with Hannah. Set the story for us. Uh, uh, the, diner, the diner scene, huh? Yeah, so, so I get the story goes... You know, they, they, they go on a trip. Uh, he asked the, the mother if, uh, uh, if he can take Hannah to L.A. with him for a weekend, and uh, she's given permission. So they go to Los Angeles for, a, you know, a, a friendly weekend or just sort of, you know, to tour around before he goes up uh, north to uh, see his sister and, and, and get some things for his house uh, that he's going to drive back to his house. And... You know that's that scene. Uh, that scene is about uh, you know the building tension within the character and how he's going to express how he really feels about her and her reaction to it. So, and whether you are listening or whether you're watching, I think you will find that tension coming through. Here is that scene from Kidnapped, the Hannah Aniston story. Justin, play it. I have a crush on you. What do you mean? No, like a family thing. Like, like I care about you. Mm, Dylan just liked the photo. Ah, oh, of course he did. I'm trying to have a conversation here. I'll just take one second. Yeah. Well, okay. you know, whatever you're texting or posting, I, I can wait till later. Okay. Tell us much. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to open up to you here. I mean, the, least you could do is listen, right? I mean, is Dylan ever taking you to Hollywood? Why are you doing this? Oh, now I'm doing something. But it looks to me like you're the one being a little bit ungrateful. Can I have my phone back, please? Let's get out of here. Go where? <sighs> my sisters, I'm done here. Wait, but why? I damn said so, that's why. Explain more about the relationship. How does this develop between Hannah and the person who ends up being her kidnapper? Yeah, I mean, as I, as I alluded to earlier, and it was a, a very close family relationship uh, that existed uh, prior to the events of this, of this film uh, between uh, Joe DiMaggio and the Anderson family. And uh, I believe uh, Hannah's uh, father was later asked, and he, he said he just didn't see this coming. I mean, it's just such a, a, an incredible uh, change in, in, the, in the dynamic there that happened, and I think what this scene is is uh, is important in doing is it's it's showing the spiral start to intensify uh, for Jim DiMaggio. You can, you can it, it's a slow burn. I think uh, Scott will be able to probably talk to that as far as the character development. But uh, this was such. I remember in the drafting of the script, this was this was a scene that probably got more attention than any other in the entire script because this is the, the one that goes from. The crush to him to, to Jim DiMaggio actually expressing it, and then things uh, obviously devolve substantially from there. Scott Jensen Murray in our chat room wants to know: Was that or something else in the film the most challenging scene for you in that character? Um, you know, there there are different degrees of challenging. You know, it was all challenging. You know, the, the reason that scene. Was difficult. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna qualify it any other way. The reason it was difficult was, you know, there's a tendency to try try to give too much in a scene. But what Hans wrote was something, uh, uh, and put you in a situation where you really didn't need to do that much. You know, the the, the story tells itself, and the, and uh, really, my job in that scene, which was, you know, probably a little bit challenging. Uh, was to get out of the way of the story and just let the scene unfold naturally. Um, in other words, under, underplay everything because it was all so creepy and so apparent and so um, uh, subtextual.
So you didn't need to do too much. And, yes, of course, that can be a challenge at times when you just, you know, you feel like you want to give it more. But, you know, Peter the, Sullivan, the director, would come over and say, you know, it, it doesn't need to be that much. And, you know, just less, 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 less. Less is more, less is more. So, uh, you know, that was, that was, that's what I think made that scene pop is, is me getting out of the way of the scene, actually. Hi, it's been 72 hours since uh, the film premiered on Lifetime. What's been the reaction? You know, it, this is maybe hard to believe for some of my friends watching this, but uh, I, I've been kind of dialed into other stuff. And, I, you know, obviously the night of, I was looking at Twitter and saw some of the reaction. Uh, I think it's been generally very positive. I think it should be. I do think, though, though unfortunately, there is a certain segment of people who watched it and even more uh, ridiculously who didn't watch it uh, that continue to have very strong opinions on the movie itself. And when I say didn't watch it, I, I, I believe there are a number of people who are opining on the movie uh, after the fact who didn't take the time to actually see what we were saying, and, and that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Hans, what's next for you? What's your next script or next TV project? Well, I, it's, it, it, as always, it's, uh, I, I mentioned at the, at the top, uh, Second Impression, which is the Austin shot produced and, and, and everything uh, feature film uh, that is directed by Wallace Weatherspoon, stars Donnie Boaz, El Lamont and Thomas Faust and Hoisking. Uh, that is about to hit the festival circuit. We finally finished it. Uh, my production partners, uh, Odette, John, and Wallace. And uh, that, that is kind of big priority one. And then there are a couple more uh, for higher projects uh, with Hybrid LLC. Uh, both of them are, are holiday, holiday uh, themed movies, uh, romantic comedies that are in the works. And you can probably see them uh, later this year. And, Scott, what about you? What's your next acting gig for television? Oh, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to pick and choose through a, a couple of things. Haven't really, uh, can't talk about it uh, right now, unfortunately. I apologize for that <laughs> and, the, and the listeners. But uh, I'll, I'll probably have something to announce pretty, pretty soon. Uh, not, not really sure what I'm going to do yet. And Jensen Murray, by the way, had that in the chat room a moment ago was with, with Scott working on any of the projects. So I think we got the question answered, and that is dynamite. Lifetime will replay Kidnap, the Hannah Anderson story in the near future. Learn when at mylifetime.com. That's mylifetime.com. The channel's next major dramatic venture is The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe, starring Kelly Garner as the iconic movie star. This two-part miniseries debuts this Saturday and Sunday, May 30th, 31st, 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific time. Again, that is on Lifetime. Writer has Wasserberger, actor, co-star Scott Patterson. Thank you both for joining us. Uh, by the way, Hans, give our best to everybody in Texas. I know you're going through a crazy, crazy time down there with the flooding, and I hope it uh, all works out for you and everybody down there. I will do that, and thanks for the wishes. And Scott, we will see you down here in Austin the uh, first week of June at the ATX TV Fest. Yeah, looking forward to it and uh, seeing all the fans. Show, Thanks, show the, uh, Just so everybody know, that's the, uh, that's the Austin Television Festival. It's becoming a very, very big thing on the uh, TV Festival circuit. So all the best to both of you down there. Thanks again again for joining us. Thank you so much. Right, thanks, Simon. Take care. You Take too. Care, Scott Patterson, Hans Wasserberger. Scott joining us live from Los Angeles. Hans Wasserberger live via Skype from Austin, Texas.